The show, I think, has managed to turn off casual viewers and dedicated fans. It's turning off dedicated fans by breaking canon, playing fast and loose with the lore, clearly written by folks who didn't comprehend, didn't care, thought they were improving. And it's turned off casual viewers because even casual viewers recognize mistakes with Vader and Kenobi. What, what's left? Nothing. The continued dismissal or mistreatment of longtime Star Wars fans, people like Kathleen Kennedy and senior leadership at Disney, uh, Disney Lucasfilm, you know, who say, okay, this is the final product. We're going to release this. Everybody's just like, yeah, it looks great. Just run it out there, right? It's Star Wars. It's got a Star Wars name on it. I can put Star Wars on a rock and sell it. I'm afraid those days are long since gone. They lost that uh, with the sequel trilogy. And um, they think that they're expanding the, the base and it's not going to affect them financially. They think that by doing these things, they're going to bring in new viewers, right, who align with their politics and their visions for Star Wars. And they might bring in a few, but plenty of other people who just want to be entertained by good storytelling and decent special effects and good acting forget whether or not they have a deep understanding of Star Wars lore and characters for that matter. They come to these shows and they're like, I don't even understand what the hell's going on here because the story doesn't make sense. You have lines or plot points that are contradictory within three to four minutes of each other in a single episode. And maybe there's some virtue signaling going on on the internet and you know social media, but hearts and minds, they know that this isn't good storytelling. You know, forget consistent with canon or anything that's come before. If you strip away all that other stuff and if you just didn't have Star Wars and you were given this show called Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Well, by episode four of this particular show, you've had so much crap with the acting and with the special effects and with the contradictory storylines and the inconsistencies just within its own universe casual viewers probably i don't even know if they're going to finish the series at this point they're gonna be like i'll just go watch stranger things it's better and this will be reflected in the disney plus subscriptions so what is the fallout what happens next what could happen everybody gets to everybody has a level of pain tolerance some people have none and some people can walk around on a bloody stump but the fan base is going to, you know, each individual person in the fan base is going to hit that point where they just can't do it anymore. We know plenty of people who have already got to that point and they have disengaged from this completely. And there are people who are going to hang on because they love the franchise and they hope that it turns around. So there will be some committed folks, but things in play, the Disney Corporation controversies that it's been involved in uh, in the real world of politics and not focusing on entertainment uh, there are some people who are going to make some choices based on that as well independent of the fact that they're being treated poorly as star wars fans eventually if it hasn't already it's going to contribute to the financial failure of disney and the, and the stock price has collapsed and and it's not just the star wars fan base that's that's feeling this the marvel fans are feeling this and as we move into uh, economic times that are a little tight, uh, people are starting to reassess where their disposable income's going. And people will quit and they'll, they'll rage quit, right? They'll be mad, they'll quit, um, or they'll make a financial decision and they'll determine that the value of the entertainment that they are getting from that service is not worth the price, and so they'll quit. This, hopefully this creates some kind of change at Disney and Lucasfilm, but mostly at Lucasfilm for the Star Wars fans. It's going to, it, it's, it's kind of a house of cards right now. It's going to collapse eventually. And like you said, giving us more bad stuff is not the answer. If you have to give us a less in order for it to be good, I'm okay with that. Are you in a position of actively rooting against so the franchise will bottom out and Disney will be forced to make changes? Well, kind of, in a way. I mean, an analogy for this might be kind of like a, like a sports franchise. 
Um, you root for the team. You always want them to do well. But sometimes you have ownership or, or leadership in an organization that's clearly making bad choices. It doesn't mean you don't want that team to do well. Star Wars is a lot like that. I love Star Wars and I want Star Wars to win and I want it to be wildly popular and I want it to make a billion dollars and I want more Star Wars all the time, but it appears cynical and it, it appears to be simultaneously a cash grab and an F you to the fans, like to a specific group of fans, I should say, not all fans, but a specific group of fans. The only agenda Star Wars should be pushing is Star Wars. Go back to writing good stories and writing good characters. Go back to treating what has come before with respect. But there is no safe haven anymore. There's no refuge. You used to be able to go to a movie, spend two hours in a dark room somewhere watching characters do a thing on the screen, and you could forget about your problems. and You could forget about the real world. If we want to seek out politics and if we want to seek out these issues and these controversies, we can find them and we know where they live and we can go hang out with politics when we want to hang out with politics. You know, we're perfectly capable of that. But when I don't want to do that, I should be able to turn on Star Wars. The political machine has now wrapped itself in the clothing of entertainment. And, and so this is one of the things that you know, one of the reasons why I say the only agenda Star Wars should have is Star Wars. It's political activism and cosplay. Star Wars is being lost because of other agendas. And it's really souring people on the product. So, um, yeah, I guess technically, I guess you could consider me actively rooting against Star Wars right now. So we've reached another crossroads in the history of the franchise. And we don't see a path of optimism. We don't see a turnaround. How do you fix Star Wars? Ooh, so how do we fix it? Remove whoever is currently involved, the leadership of it, right? Or at least have a review of all of your top-level decision-making staff. Who's a, who's a believer and who's not, right? Who's a Star Wars person and who's an activist? Or who's a Star Wars person and who's a person that's just not fully committed? And you get rid of all of those people. All you would have left is probably Filoni and Favreau in a large building. But that's okay. Then you take a break from whatever is being put out. You finish whatever's in the pipeline. You finish that stuff. And then you pull the Disney move. And you announce that we are going to, we're going to put Star Wars in the vault. Yeah, you can still go to the galactic cruiser thing and you can still go to galaxy's edge and we're still going to sell toys and all that other stuff. But you take the hiatus, right? You make it however long it needs to be. It could be a year, it could be six months, could be 10 years. I don't know. Hopefully it's not 10 years. It shouldn't take that long. Uh, and then you go through the process of hiring people in your organization who are world-class at whatever it is you're wanting them to do but they also have to be Star Wars people. And then you have to have an organizational top-down visioning kind of session. Maybe it gets a little culty, but you're like, we are here for Star Wars and that's it. And, and we will purge or burn away any element that is not committed to Star Wars, right? And then you start writing stories, but they have to be well done and they have to be meaningful and they have to be epic and scale and grand like the original Star Wars trilogies. Right, and then you produce them and put them out. But you have to have this internal situation handled at, at Lucasfilm, right? It can't be you have you have to find the best writers and the best producers and the best special effects people and the best directors. Star Wars is not something that you do on the cheap. It's not something you necessarily do on the quick. It's not something you take lightly because the the Star Wars franchise is a cultural icon and not just in the United States it's a global thing you have the responsibility of creating content that is meaningful to the population of the world you listen to Dave Filoni talk about Star Wars and then you listen to Kathleen Kennedy talk about Star Wars and you know who is an actual Star Wars fan she uses all these buzzwords about, no, oh, we're going to tell these great stories, you know. But it's, no, you, no, you're not. 
And Dave Floney is over there like freaking out over the tone of green to use for Yoda's skin or whatever. You're like, okay, there's a guy who gets it. Right? He's worried about the fans saying it doesn't look right or it doesn't fit. She's like, oh, we're just going to have these wonderful you know, people come together and tell these meaningful stories. And you're like, well, what kind of meaningful story is that, Kathy? Oh, we're going to talk about strong female characters. But okay, that's not a story. Get all that out the door. The reason why these shows feel all piecemeal, weird, stitched together is because you're starting with, with the wrong end in mind. And, they, and you had mentioned uh, earlier about people not learning the lessons or learning the wrong lessons uh, from things. And uh, the leadership at Lucasfilm and Disney, by extension, continue to demonstrate that they are not learning the lessons from what they're producing and the, and the public's response to it. So, yeah, I don't know. Fixing Star Wars is one. It's, it's going to be ugly and it's going to be messy and it's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings. And it's also going to hurt a lot of fans because they are going to have to shut it down for a while until they get it figured out. And we just need to get over it and we need to get beyond it and get over the withdrawals and then say, okay, now I have a clear head. Um, Let's talk about what we're doing here. You know, we joked in the last episode, like, hey, we're not calling for boycotts here. We're not telling other fans you, you can't like it. But let's think about the last two questions or your answers to the last two questions. And all due respect, but if you come away from this episode, yeah, that's great Star Wars. We're just too far apart. Something's got to give, right? Well, yeah. Uh, the people voting with their money are will make an impact uh, because Disney is a corporation and they're publicly traded. And they need to make a profit. If I, If I say, well, you know, I don't like modern Disney Star Wars, so I'm not buying modern Disney Star Wars figures. Um, I'm only going to buy original trilogy figures. Hasbro and Disney Lucasfilm will will figure that out. They have access to data regarding merchandise sales, and they can spot trends, and they can track things. And, And if they're truly honest with themselves, that will be the thing, really, that ultimately drives the change. And it will be interesting to see if the Inquisitor lightsaber HasLab thing gets funded or not, because there's a lot of conversations surrounding that. This has become a, a, a totem about the things that are being done with the Kenobi show. A referendum? Um, yes, it could be considered a referendum ultimately, because if people buy this thing, it will be an indicator to Disney Lucasfilm that they can continue doing the things that they're doing. Let's see where we stand. It's it, it needs five thousand backers in order to be fully funded. It is at twenty point five six percent funded. A third, not quite a half, over the funding period. So this will probably be the second Star Wars Haslab in a row to fail to be funded. Okay, so your prediction: Reva's lightsaber will not reach its funding goal. I don't see this being funded. And then somebody like six years from now will be like, hey, weren't we supposed to get a Reva show? And everyone will be like, oh, yeah, well, well, don't, nothing to see here. It, and, and, the, and the idea that a Reva spinoff is coming, well, they're still working on the ending. And initially they were going to kill Reva, but now they're going to let Reva live. Well, that's not necessarily for a spinoff. That just might be covering up the fact that you're still working on the show, that it wasn't ready to go when it should have been. Maybe we'll get a Reva show and Ben Kenobi will be the main character. The Reva spinoff will be about Obi-Wan watching over Luke on Tatooine. Hit like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you, hey, we could tell you Mike Zero the hell out of that. That is good stuff right there. We're going to have a show called Ewoks and it's going to be all about droids. <laughs> Rights of initiative is not or endorsed by Lucasfilm Limited. The name Star Wars and all related materials are registered trademarks of Lucasfilm Limited, a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company, all rights reserved. Galactic Initiative is a registered trademark, and other product and company names are trademarks of their respective holders. Use does not imply affiliation or endorsement.